All right. Today we're going to look at the uh, how they're going. To, the Lord is going to give uh, has given Moses the, the the garments and so forth that the priests will wear. So we're going to be looking at some of that this morning in chapter 28. So if you got, you'll turn with me to chapter 28, and we'll take it up from there. <clears throat> it says Aaron, take the Lord speaking here. Says Aaron, take thou unto the Aaron, excuse me, and take thou unto the Aaron thy brother, his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest priest office, even Aaron, Nadab, uh, Abul, Eleazar, and Ithamar, and Aaron's, Aaron's sons. So what the Lord is saying here, now you're going to use Aaron, and you're going to use the descendants of Aaron. Of course, that's a tree of, the, tree, the tribe of Levi uh, that's going to be taken doing the priestly services. Uh, what tribe was for Moses from? It's from Levi. He was Aaron's brother. Uh, Moses also was from the tribe of Levi. Uh, they are they are going to be set apart from the other tribes. You remember the Lord. Uh, if you remember, the Lord uh, said He wanted the firstborn of every everyone in in the camp in the in the in the Israelites to be to serve Him. Well, what He's doing here, He's just, He's allowing this one tribe to take their place, so that uh, so that the families won't. Keep the families together in the other tw on, uh, in the tribes, rather than taking their firstborn. Even though G even though the taking the firstborn is the is the is a symbol uh, of the the first uh, of the best part, because the first child was always got a double portion of inheritance. Uh, it was always considered the uh, the lead uh, or the lead person in the family. Later on, as they grew. Uh, but you remember what happened with Moses? He had uh, not Moses, but with Abraham's sons. They lost, they lost that position. Several of them lost that position until it, it was uh, uh, Judah that became that, that, that fulfilled that spot uh, of being the primary uh, son of Abraham, and so <clears throat> not of Abraham, but of uh, of jo jo uh, Jacob. But anyhow. Uh, Aaron here is going to take is, is taking the place of, of the firstborn, and it names of course he his sons, and his sons are going to be uh, serving in the temple supposed to be in the days ahead. But now in verse two says, and, and and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron <coughs> thy brother, for for glory and for beauty. Of course, Aaron Aaron uh, is, is told here that he's going to be the the priest, and he's going to be, make his his sons to be the priest, but they're going to make special garments, and as as to how they will serve, be serving in that temple capacity. Uh, we talked about it a little bit last week, and we mentioned we'll probably mention here again uh, as we go along. But uh, but about what what how this fulfills the how Jesus fulfilled some of these uh, some of these teachings. But anyhow, verse 3 says, And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. And they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate them, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So it's an interesting phrase here, uh, and it kind of answers a question I think somebody brought up here a week or so ago. Uh, about, And basically the question, I think, as well as I remember, the question was, how did they remember did Moses write all this down from the Lord? How did they remember? Well, you see, look, the Lord not only, like I said, I think last time, that he kind of downloaded a lot of the information to Moses, but he also downloaded other, <coughs> other, other things for, uh, that would, for, to people in the tribes that would need to be serving and are creating some of these things. He says here, Thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Now, watch what he's talking about. He's filled them, all those people. How it gave them special knowledge, you might say, of how to build this menorah and how to build the the different uh, 
furniture and so forth that will go in the temple, how to make the, the curtains, how to make the rings, how to make the, uh, 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 the Ark of the Covenant. By the way, Harry's got a, a model of the Ark of the Covenant over here if you want to look at it, uh, and, and all, all that takes place there. The Lord gave them special t information to whoever, it says here that, that are wise-hearted. What that means, I think, that they were talented, that maybe they already had, like, a, like for instance, in our days, it might be somebody that could work on cars good, somebody that could embroider good, or, or a seamstress could make clothes. They would download it to them on special ways of how they will, how they will serve in this capacity uh, in building this stuff. Uh, that the Lord has, has, has given them. Even today, some of the things uh, that uh, are described or that, that, or that the Jews believe are, are uh, as hard or almost, in fact, like I said, I think before, they wondered how in the world uh, they built the uh, menorah out of one solid piece of gold, but they did. Uh, and how that all takes, how that would all take place. Uh, you would think it, uh, to do it, you would have to fasten each each individual end, and then they would fasten it onto the uh, the pipes or whatever that hung. But that's not how they done it. They done it out of one solid piece of gold. And uh, but anyhow, it's, it's, it's like a like a pillar to something that I built too. That you got a monolithic four of hundreds of yards of concrete, and you can't stop it. And when you start, yep, you, you got to keep put it. it all together. You will have a coal joint. Yep. So the same way as you, you have to, the gold and the things of you have to have it all laid out in the right order. Yeah, and it's all up here knowledge. What he's talking That's about. That's what he's talking about. He gave no school and writing down. Uh, professor. Yeah, to do it. <laughs> how to do it and all. It was knowledge that they that the Lord gave them and helped them helped them. That's right. And uh, and and so you see here. That's what that's what I think. Kind of answers the question is that how did they know what to do. The Lord gave them the knowledge. He, he instilled it in them. And, and certain people that had these talents instilled it even more so that they would know these special ways to create all this stuff. Same thing is true here then with the garments, how these garments are, are to be made. Uh, I've, read, I've read over this several times, uh, and, and even though I've read over it, I couldn't do it. Ain't no way I could do it. You could read it as many times as I wanted to. I couldn't do it. But these people, they, the Lord gave them the, will, the ability to do it. But anyhow, it says, I have filled, filled the, uh, with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate them, uh, that he may minister unto, the, unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, I've mentioned, mentioned that breastplate before. And it says, and an ephod, and a robe, and a broad, and broidered coat, a mithra, or whatever that is, and a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, uh, that he may minister into, unto me in the priest's office. All right, that's what... what that's what they're going to be doing. Aaron and all his, his sons, and basically that whole, that whole tribe will be ministering in some form or capacity. Now, they're, the Aaron's, Aaron's uh, descendants, his sons and his descendants, became the, the priestly tribe, uh, a priestly group, I guess I should say, or, or uh, that would minister within the temple itself. But there's other, others in the tribe of Levi but they also would minister. They would be the uh, maybe they would be the ones that would handle the animals as they were bring, brought them to sacrifice. Uh, they were the ones that maybe done the cleaning around the place. All of them served in some capacity in the temple and temple worship. All that tribe. That's all they were to do. They weren't to farm. They weren't to go out and raise their own food. They would end up getting the food that was brought to the temple. Uh, the 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 meat that was some of the meat that was brought for the sacrifices. That's how they would. That's how they would be provided for. So the priestly tribe uh, uh, of Levi uh, <coughs> would would fulfill all these different tasks. And they shall. And verse five says, and they shall take gold, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen. Linen. And in other words, they take all these different things. Uh, and obviously, they're going 
the Lord is going to give some of the ladies probably the ability to make some of these this fine linen. Of course, remember, uh, some of y'all uh, went to the to Israel. You went up to Nazareth to that uh, village in Nazareth, that living village, you might say. Uh, that one of the things was that went to a an, into a little area where a woman was uh, spinning clothes, uh, spinning, uh, making making uh, yarn out of the uh, wool and so forth, and it showed how that they would spin it. They didn't, of course, they didn't have it in electric motors then to do the spinning. They they had it had a little thing, a ped pedal or something, or they would uh, pull. And, and let it go on to the spindle, and it, twisting the, uh, the wool into a, into a, a, a thread. Uh, it, it was interesting to see that. Uh, another, one, another one, by the way, I had showed how they would, the carpenters would make holes. They didn't have electric drills. They, they would take a bow, look like a bow, a string, and uh, uh, three pieces, basically. And the, the drill part, they would wrap, they would, Take that and twist it around that bow so that it would so that the bow was wrapped around the pin and hold it down and then they just saw it, saw it like back like and it would spin that spin that uh, uh, bit you might say if you were to call it that to make hole. Uh, it, it was interesting, but anyhow it showed how the woman how they would what they would use to make different colors with the pomegranate, uh, uh, maybe different uh, <coughs> different time type of plants and so forth that they used to create the colors. <clears throat> but anyhow, that's what they're doing here. Uh, these women are to, to make these fine fine garments. And they shall make, verse 6, and they shall, shall make the epot of gold, uh, of blue and of purple and of scarlet and fine twine linen uh, with cunning work. See there it says with cunning work. I think that kind of indicates that uh, it's work that they have been, they are very good at. And the Lord has helped them, taught them how to do this or some in some form or fashion, uh, but anyhow, they are spinning all that to make all those garments. Uh, and it says, and he shall have, uh, and it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and uh, and so it shall be joined together. That's the reason. It's something to do with the shoulders, and there's going to be putting. Uh, so we'll see later on. They'll put something else on the shoulders with a with a stone. So we we'll look at that. But uh, I think this is a special area on the shoulders of the priestly <laughs> garment that they will wear, uh, and be called the ipod, uh, the, the two shoulder pieces, uh, actually. And it says, and the curious girdle of the ipod, which is upon it, shall be of the same, according to the works thereof, even of gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. So they're going to use these different garments. Uh, to make this priestly tribe. Uh, sounds kind of like, you, you kind of get the impression it's kind of like the coat of many colors uh, that jo the, uh, Joseph, uh, that Jacob gave to Joseph. Uh, but anyhow, uh, these different colors I think represent, I think we talked a little bit about them last week. Of course, gold is being his kingship. And blue would being of, being of his uh, uh, heavenly aspect, you might say. And purple of... Uh, and purple and or scarlet would be of his kingship, uh, that he was a king. And of course, you know, the, the white is not listed here. It will be later. But white would be like a, representing the purity of the Messiah, the, of Jesus. So all these different colors, all these different things are going to relate in some form or fashion to the Messiah as he comes. Uh, but anyhow, the, it says in fine twine uh, linen, and we'll talk, talk about that more. Any questions so far? Some of you ladies might be able to help on these garment things because uh, that description there wouldn't tell me nothing about how I could do it. <laughs> but it, but the, it, it gave, uh, it, he gave Israel the ability to do those things. And thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave on them the names of the children of Israel. All right? And, and it says in the next verse, look at the next verse, six of their names on one stone on the... the and the other six names uh, of the rest of the other, st other stone according to their birth. In other words, uh, they're going to be lined up according to their birth on, on these stones. There's going to be six names on one on onyx stone, and then there will be six names on the other onyx stone. And uh, these will become part of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 
these will become part of that epod that we've been talking about. And it says, and with the work of an engraver in stone, like an engraving of a signet, shall thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in alches of gold. In other words, uh, it's kind of like a, a diamond set or anything. You, you put a, 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 a special or a, 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 a stone of some sort, you'd have to have a set to put it in and bend it so that it would hold it in place. Uh, like just like you ladies rings with diamonds on they they they've got a set that they're put in that's what they're talking about here uh, <clears throat> and the two stones with the names of that they'll be they'll be uh, in, engraved or held that way as well uh, i think it's interesting too you see that this the priest he is going to be interceding for who for the 12 tribes of israel actually it's a picture of intercession for us as well but that he's carrying representation of all 12 tribes on his shoulders. And that's, that's very interesting that he's, he's lifting them up. He's carrying them just like, just like the Lord said that he brought them out, out of Egypt on eagle's wings. Now, they didn't literally jump on a weak eagle, but he, he lifted them up. He brought them through the wa water uh, of the Red Sea, and then he brought them into the wilderness, provided for them and everything, and that's basically what that's a reference to. Excuse me. And the two ships, but they will be on his shoulders. In other words, he's carrying them, you might say. Uh, and, and to the children of Israel and Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. And so that's what that's saying. Verse, I, I might skip some. Let's read all the tw verse 12. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders uh, of the ipod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon the two shoulders of, for a memorial. And thou shalt make ouches of gold. In other words, uh, the, the, or settings, of, of, you might say, of, of gold. And the two chains, and two chains of pure gold at the ends of uh, uh, wreathen work shall thou make them and fasten the wreathen chains to the ouches. In other words, it's all going to be chained together. It's going to, they're going to fasten it with changes. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with the cunning work. In other words, they're going to give somebody special ability to make this breastplate. And after the work of the epod, after the work of the epod, thou shalt make it of gold and blue and purple and scarlet and of fine twine linen thou shalt make it. In other words, the breastplate is going to be made to, just like the epod was made, of the same material. <coughs> Four square it shall be, uh, being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. So in other words, it's going to be square. It's going to, it's going to be uh, same, the same dimensions on all four sides. And thou shalt set it uh, in settings, settings of stone, even four rows of stones. Uh, the first row shall be of sardis, topaz, and of carbuncle. Uh, this shall be the first row. Now he's telling about the different, what he's talking about in this breastplate now is going to have four rows uh, of settings that you can put these stones in. And uh, there'll be uh, three stones in each of the four rows, which would be, of course, three fourths of 12. There's going to be 12 stones on the breastplate. And the second row shall be emerald, sapphire, and diamond. Now, also, I think, I don't know if remember <coughs> if we read it prior to this or we'll read it, but they're in order to the, of the tribes of Israel. And the, and the second row shall be of emerald, sapphire, and diamond. The third row shall be of lingur, I can't pronounce, agate, and amethyst. Uh, I ain't sure what, what that one is. I think one of them said that they probably is a uh, topaz, I believe it was. <clears throat> and the fourth row shall be a barrel, a burial, or whatever that is, an onyx and jasper. And they shall be set in gold uh, in their enclosings. So they're going to be uh, fixed on that breastplate that, uh, so that they will, uh, they, those will be there. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. So he, t 12 according to their names. 
like the engraving of, ins of a insignet. Uh, Every one with his name shall ha shall they uh, be according to the twelve tribes. In other words, they're going to be they're each each <clears throat> each stone will have a name of the tribe in it. Basically, what that's saying uh, of the twelve tribes, one stone will be. Uh, uh, Judah, next stone will be somebody else, one of the other tribes. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains uh, at the ends uh, of wreath work of pure gold. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold and shalt put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. In other words, the breastplate will have two rings that it will be attached, attached with. And thou shalt put the two wreath chains of gold in the two rings, which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends uh, of the two wreath chains thou shalt fasten uh, <clears throat> in the two alches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the hip hop before it. I ain't exactly sure what this is talking about. It sounds like the chains are going to come up and fasten somehow to that hip hop or the shoulder area uh, of, his, of his garment. Maybe you, some of you ladies might not understand more about what he's saying here, but that's the kind of way I see it. Anybody got any? Anybody want to elaborate on that? <laughs> I've seen a picture of that somewhere or other with dress with that. Yeah. All this on. Yeah, pretty. Uh, supposedly, that's, by, by the way, supposedly they got all that already ready in Israel for the new, for the new. Uh, temple when it's built. They've already got all these garments made. They've got the menorah. They've got all the, all the utensils, supposedly. Uh, uh, I, I will tell you this, too. We, knew, we, do, we do know that uh, when Rome sacked Jerusalem in 70 AD, that they took a lot of that stuff. They took the menorah. The reason we know it is because we have, uh, the Romans had the uh, uh, you know, engravings of their great conquest. And one of them shows up Romans carrying the, the uh, menorah to, to Rome. They're taking the spoils uh, to Rome. And many people believe that some of these same items are into Vatican. They've still got them. I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, but some believe that they are. They, in fact, the Jews say that they do. And, and they have requested that... Uh, that the Pope give it back to them, but that hadn't happened yet. But uh, that they're saying that, and that a lot of that stuff is 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 still in the in the, uh, in the Vatican. Rome, the Roman Catholic Church has it. If they do, they should give it back. But irregardless, the the, the Lord's going to have them have it made the way they want it. But, <coughs> I've read this several times. Things in the Bible. All the gold is right there. Don't you think the possibility, you know, most of Israel's mountains is volcanoes. But when he said, go to the land of milk and honey, you know, and, and he would bless you with anything you need, but don't you think probably on that land where those volcanoes, when they were coming into the land, gold was just scattered all over the ground from the volcano? Well, it could very possible it could be. And, I'm and not, I know, I think it's if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, when you talk about uh, what, what was not David, but David's son, Solomon. When, uh, at Solomon, Solomon. Solomon, when King Solomon, they said the gold was just like rocks on the floor. Yeah. I mean, uh, you could just pick, I think that's in scripture. Uh, but you don't forget too that when they left Egypt, they took all the spoils of Egypt. They took the gold, they went into their homes <laughs> and took it. They, they spoiled the, uh, and they said, here, take this gold and get out of here. We're tired of these plagues. But, uh, but it yeah. sounded like it was plenty of it. Yep. Yeah, they had plenty of gold. Uh, and they would have had to have had it. If, if, if you had all the gold that was in all of this, it would be a fortune, a <coughs> big fortune. And I will say tell you this, too. I've heard, and I can't remember who it is. Uh, it's an archaeologist in Israel. You know that when when the the uh, uh, Dead Sea Scrolls were found, one of these Dead Sea Scrolls was a copper scroll. Ever heard of the copper scroll? 
it was it was made from copper. It wasn't made from uh, goat skin or whatever. And they uh, were able to uh, unroll it. They it wouldn't it wasn't easy to unroll. They had it. I can't remember exactly the technology they used. But anyhow, they read what's on that copper scroll, and it describes treasures. And one of the treasures is the uh, is this uh, the uh, tabernacle and all that was in it. Well, they got to looking at it, and this guy believes that the description about where it's where it's at, because it, this 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 uh, copper scroll tells them where it's at, but they can't figure out where that's at. <laughs> But this guy believes that what it's talking about, and I don't know all the ins and outs about it, but he believes it's it's there at Qumran. At some of those er some of those areas, it's, that's where it was hid uh, when the temple was sacked by Rome. That they hid a lot of the uh, 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 the things, like for instance, the tabernacle, all the the I guess it would be rolled up and all the poles and everything, and would all be together. But it has several different places, and it describes areas that sounds like Qumran, where the uh, where the, they, the the Essenes wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it says if one, it says you go down so many steps, and you go so many cubits, which is got a cubit over there, you go so many cubits, and that's where it'll be. And it's it it those descriptions sound just like some of the descriptions of the Essenes at Qumran. So he believes it's there, it's, there it's where it's at. And he's asked for permission to dig, but they don't let him do it. But uh, but anyhow, that's just and something. We, you remember we visited uh, the place and, and come before we got to, it was in Egypt about where the paper, they made it from this pa plant. Pa papyrus? Yeah, papyrus paper. What that, the scrolls written on that? Some of it was, yeah. but mostly Egyptian, Egypt stuff is written on that. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls are written on goat skin and, and, and so forth. It's, uh, and, but that one was, was on copper. It was on a rolled up piece of, like tin, you might say. Well, copper could have come, come out of those mines. Out yeah, of those copper mines. Of Sol yeah. Solomon had the Solomon's copper mines. Yeah. yeah. So they had, they had plenty of ma raw material to work with. In, in Israel, but uh, but I thought that's I think that's interesting. It'd be interesting to find out if they would find the tabernacle. If they would find the tabernacle, then that would they may not have to build a temple. They could just put the tabernacle up. That's another 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 uh, way to look at it. Jack was telling me last <coughs> week that David Acker, Acker, and he said digging people has found another. Uh, Chapel, a mosque where probably Jesus talked in. They, they just discovered it, and it's up in uh, the northern section of Sea of Galilee in that area. You found know, a what? A, a, found a, a church. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, where he they have dug it and found that man oh. here lately, just recently. How about that? I hadn't heard about that. Well, he, he we were talking about in Israel, and he. I was telling about certain things where he already dug up and cleared up, and just like that city that had all that stadium and everything in yeah. it. We visit. The only way, uh, the reason, the way they found that was when they flew over it with airplanes, and they could just see the <coughs> outside rim of it just right. a little bit because it was covered up. It was, it, but it was all filled in with. Yeah. It. They, they seen the set, and then they started digging, and come to find out there was a whole Caesarea by the sea. Uh, but anyhow, the, the breastplate uh, is something that uh, is made the same way uh, and then is made, is made in four square and that's just to put the stones on it and that's what they're going to uh, uh, wear. The, it says in, in, the, in verse 20, I think, about where we got to it, and the fourth row shall be of onyx and bareth, some, of some of these I don't know, and jasper, and they shall set the gold in the enclosings and the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, 12 according to the names, and engraved in a signet. And every one of the names shall they be according to the 12 tribes. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains, and we talked about that, didn't we? And thou shalt put the uh, put, hang the breastplate on the garments, 
and the two ends, uh, two rings of gold. We done, we've been through a lot of this, hadn't we? Where did we get to? 28, 28? 28? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got time. And the first 28 says, And they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the epod, which with a lace of blue, that it may be above the above the curious girdle of the epod, and that the breastplate be not loosed from the epod. In other words, they would be to, uh, fastened together. The breastplate and the epod, both of them contains the 12 tribes. Uh, the epods, we have six on one and six on the other. Uh, that's interesting too, it's divided into six, I mean divided into two sections. But anyhow, it says, and Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth into the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. So that's when he's supposed to have it, wear it. He's supposed to wear it when he goes in to the holy place. Not the holy of holies, but the holy place. That's when he's, that's the first room that you go into. That's where the menorah is at, the table of showbread, and the uh, altar of incense. Those are the three things that are in there. And that's when he goes in there to minister, he's to wear this outfit. But not when he goes into the Holy of Holies. I could uncrate that right there in the showbread. But it's in part. You know? Yeah, it would be difficult to do that. Uh, and thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tab, whatever that is. And they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. So that's, that represents the judgment of the, upon, his, upon the heart. In other words, the life, the blood, uh, that will, will be a covering for that. And thou shalt make the robe of the ephod all of blue, and they shall be a, there shall be a hole in the top of it, in the midst thereof, it shall have a, a binding of woven work around about the whole of it, uh, as it were the whole of a, what in the world, that, whatever that is. <laughs> Some of y'all might know, anybody know what that is? Let's see what it tells me here. Uh, the original sense, uh, corset, as white or hollow, uh, whatever that is. And from this, let's see. A primitive root, root of glowing and grown warm figuratively uh, to blaze up, to anger, to zeal, to zealous, to anger, burn, be displeased, earnest. In other words, I, I think that's what it's talking about here is it says it was uh, for judgment. Y'all got any ideas? In, in mine, it's talking about uh, there shall be an opening for his head in the middle of it. It yeah. shall have a woven binding all around its opening like the opening in a coat of mail yeah. so that it does not tear. It'll be over his head and through his arms through the holes, I guess. A coat of mail, not I don't know what the coat of mail, I don't know what that is. Y'all ladies got any idea? Like chain mail? Huh? Like chain mail? Well, we don't have to build it today. <laughs> How many verses we got left? Uh, I tell you, let's stop there. Uh, the breath of the hymn. I'll stop at verse 30, 33. We'll pick it up at 33 next, next, next week. And we'll, if you get a chance and you want to look at it, and y'all, one of you one of you ladies want to sew that up? Bring it out here for us to look at. All right, let's all stand. We'll be dismissed. Give some of y'all that didn't get to come last night a chance to maybe go meet uh, Jack. He's a real nice, nice fella. Real. Uh, if you get a chance, you want to say hello to him. I hope to have him back again sometime, baby. But anyhow, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator and maker of the universe, again, we just praise your name for who you are and what you continue to do for us. And Lord, we just ask now that you be with us and we go into the worship service. Be with Jack as he brings a message, Father, that you will 
you will uplift him by your spirit. And Father, teach us, uh, uh, let us have insight into what's going on in Israel today. And we'll just praise you, Father, for it. If anybody has an unspoken or a special need or request, we ask you to meet it according to your will. And again, be with all those that, uh, that we've mentioned here today. And I pray now a blessing over everyone here. Yavarachacha Adonai Ba'ish Marecha. Ya'er Adonai Panadilecha Vilkanecha. Yasa Adonai Panadilecha Vilsimlecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, his peace. As always, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Shem Yeshua. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, he he, he sung that That's same. What I started to tell you. you got to learn how to sing. It. No, no, I ain't gonna try to sing it. He done a great job of it. I've heard some of them do. Some of them try to sing it, and it don't sound good. <laughs> but he did pretty. I mean, oh, it was pretty. All right.